Have you ever been curious the best way to build an attendance tracker? And I'm not just talking about something for education where we're keeping track of attendance for classes. That is a common use case. But think about this also at the corporate sense. Anytime you're trying to measure employees at an event or you're putting together an online course, attendance is an important part of what you do. I'd say it's something that comes up almost as frequently as project management. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and this video is part of our architecture series, Better Understanding the How and Whys and Best Practices of Everything that We're Building. Now, we're putting together this course. It's entirely free. We're actually taking all the ads off of our YouTube videos so that you can better understand how to build in no code. If that's something of interest to you, check out the link in the description below. So when it comes to attendance, we oftentimes think of a really easy to use kind of setup, something like a spreadsheet where we just have names of people and we have a bunch of dates and we can just keep checking on their attendance, add more date columns as we go. And that works really well for a spreadsheet. I'm not knocking it at all. So if you find this useful, you might just want to stick to a spreadsheet. But in the world of no code, attendance really isn't a property of the person record. So I've got characteristics of myself, like my eye color and my hair color, my job title, the company I work at, my address, my phone number. But we have Dan, the person, and we have an event or a course or a session that I'm attending. And so Dan attending this course or this session, we actually have two different objects. And so we need to relate these two as opposed to just having static data that we have as we would in a spreadsheet. So let's talk about a few different ways that we could implement this in the real world and still keep a decent user experience. So the simplest way to do this is to have a many-to-many -many relationship. If you want to learn more about link tables and relationships, we have another video on that as well. So in Airtable, we have two different tables. We've got people and we have sessions, or this could be courses, classes, however you think about it, events. And in this case, we want to have a many-to-many -many relationship between people and those sessions. So that's pretty easy to do. We just created a new field. We linked it to sessions. I called this many to many because we've got another way of constructing this that we'll talk about in a moment. And on each side, we're allowing linking to multiple records. So I'm on people and we're allowing linking to multiple records of our sessions. And on our sessions, we've got our name and our date. And then we have that reciprocal relationship. We're able to link back to the people allowing linking to multiple people records. But the implementation of this is a little bit tricky. So if I have my sessions in here and I want to be able to add additional records, I could do it from the people side and I could say, okay, well, who came to class two? And I could add them. But notice it's taken quite a few clicks to be able to do this, to get all of our information. Also imagine you had to make a change and you wanted to delete one of these records. So you have to click in and delete it, but you accidentally delete the wrong one. And then you got to go back and find it. You could do it from the other side of the relationship. We're on our session and we want to say, okay, which people attended that session? We could look them up that way. But if you do want to do this many-to-many -many relationship tracking, I do want to propose an alternative way that keeps the same database structure, but might make it a little bit easier on the front end. So for this, we're going to be using a tool called Softer, which is used to build internal applications on top of Airtable and other data sources for your team. Inside a software, what I'm doing is I'm on a class session here, and I'm actually just displaying the people records down below. I've got a table. We could make this look significantly nicer, but I'm not really focused on the design side. I just want to talk about the structure. So this is all linked to our information inside of Airtable. And if we click on our actions here, we can add a new item button. An item button means it's going to show for each of the records we have in this table. So let's add an item button here, and we're going to scroll down to this option called One Click Update. This is one of my favorite actions inside a software. Let's change this update to Mark Present, and then we're going to add a field, and this field is going to be that sessions, the many-to-many -many relationship that we created. And why I like software so much in this regard is that we can choose how we want to update this. Do we want to replace the existing value, add an additional value, or clear the value? In this case, we're saying we want to add a new session record to this people record. So we're going to add an additional value. And now remember, we're actually on the session record itself. So this is that class two. So the value to add, we can do this dynamically. So I'm going to choose our details page, our session, and then we're going to click on the record ID. And then we might want to change the success message. So we'll change it to something more relevant, like the student has been marked present. So now when we're in that class or session record, we can see all of the different students or employees that we have down below, and we can click those buttons to mark those students present. 
will see these notifications. Might take a couple seconds to run, but you can click multiple of them at the same time. And now back in Airtable, we can see it's appended that information. So we've got class two for each of those three individuals. And if we go on the session side, we can see each of the attendees for that class. So that works really well for attendance. If you just need a simple setup, you just want to say, what people are at what sessions or events or courses. It's not storing additional information about the people like were they present, were they tardy, were they absent? It simply does that relationship exist. So let's talk about the most common approach to be able to construct this, and that's with use of a junction table. So I've created a new table called attendance, and attendance is going to be that junction or that intersection between the people records and the session records. So in this case, the attendee, I could click here, would be one of the individuals, it would be Dan. And then we've got a session, here's class one, and that session automatically looks up the date information if we need it. We're auto-concatenating to say Dan is at class one, but we can track additional information. So this is where we could have a status, something like this person is present, or they're tardy, or they're absent. But it's not just for status tracking. You could have someone evaluate the course. You could have them upload some documents that they need for that information as well. So a junction table for the purposes of reporting and automations and additional data is definitely the way I recommend to go from that database structure side of things. But unfortunately, from the user experience side, this can be pretty frustrating. Imagine you had 25 people in a class and now you need to create a new record every time and say, okay, well, there's Dan for class one. And here's Ben, and let's link it for class one. And then we go through that entire list. That's an awful lot of clicks. So one approach to this inside of Airtable is to use a combination of an automation and an interface. Let's check out that interface and what we're going to do. So if I go to my interfaces, I've got this attendance tracker. And I built this so I have a record picker. I can first choose which of these sessions we're looking at, and I can just click on whichever is our current session for that day. So if I'm on class one, you can see we have different properties about that class or session, like the date. Let's say we go to class three, which hasn't been in progress yet. There's no sessions. I'm going to press this button to generate our attendance records. So here we had an automation do the dirty work for us of actually creating each of those records in the background for that junction table. That means for the instructor of this course, it's really easy to be able just to mark the status of any of these students rather than having to create each of those records each time. So how exactly did we do that with an automation? Well, first we have our trigger we're triggering this based on when that button is clicked inside of the interface. So when we're generating attendance, it's already taking the context of that record. It knew we were on class three. The next thing I'm doing is finding all of the people records. Now, in this case, I'm trying to find all of the people, but you could have this segmented in some sort of way, like maybe it's only people for that particular course or session or whatever's going on. So you don't need to grab everybody in the database. And then we're simply looping or iterating over that list of records that we found. And for each individual record that we found, then we're going to create an attendance record. We're going to link that to the people record. We're going to link it to the session or class that we're on. And then all we have to do is leave it up to the user to actually update that status value. Now, I think this is a pretty good user experience. The only downside I'd say of this is that it is automation dependent, that the automation itself is creating those records. And because we're using an automation, depending on which plan you're on, that could be a little bit restrictive for you. Well, another nice user experience for this is using a tool called NoLoco, which is also used for building internal applications. Now, Loco does have tools like Airtable and SmartSuite as a backend, but they also have their own internal tables that you can use. In the case of No Loco, it's similar to software how we were showing that class information up at the top with the date, and then we're listing the students underneath. But what we're doing for this step is we're constructing an action here to actually create that junction table record for us. So we're creating a record. It's going to create this attendance collection. And in the background, it's automatically linking to both the session that we're currently on, as well as the attendee, which is that record that we're selecting. So let me get out of build mode for a second here. And now you can see when I hover over any one of these records, I have a button to mark them present. What's cool is I could just construct a different button if I want to mark them absent. And so I wouldn't even have that extra click of choosing a dropdown, selecting the value from the dropdown, and then tabbing off. Instead, I could just click whichever button is relevant. So with no loco, let's go ahead and click those buttons to mark the students present. And one thing I really love about no loco is their ability to make their data reactive. So you saw this attendees counter actually incrementing. 
So as it was creating those records in the background to track attendance, it was also incrementing this attendees field so I could see, okay, for this class, how many people were actually present. But what if instead of putting the responsibility on the instructor to take attendance, we want to actually put the responsibility on the employees or the students? One thing that we can do is create a form inside of Airtable and we can actually pre-fill the information that needs to get submitted as part of that form. So I've created a simple form here where all we're doing is putting in the status, the attendee, and the session. But we really don't want to leave it up to the attendee to have to fill in all that information and maybe we don't want to expose the entire list of our attendees to everyone as well. So what we're doing in this case is I'm on my people table here. We've marked our current session because we're going to need to grab the identifier from that session. We've got our session ID. And then we've created a formula field to be able to concatenate all this information together. So I've got my Airtable form and we're pre-filling in our attendee or the person record. We're pre-filling in the session. We've marked their status as a default field. And then we're simply hiding all of these fields. So why are we doing this? Well, we could have an automation that before the session takes place, maybe 24 hours ahead of time or right when the class is starting, it's going to automatically email them or text them this unique link. And by unique, I truly mean that it's unique for that individual. So it's already pre-populated with their attendee information that's going to be unique down to that individual. So if I click and open up my Dan form, there's nothing I have to fill out. It already knows the status, it knows the session, it knows my name. So all I have to do is say, I'm here. And then once that form submits, it automatically creates that record for me. Or in Glide, which we love for building mobile applications, you could have it automatically generate a QR code. This doesn't take any kind of Make or Zapier integration. It does it all within Glide. And then once you've scanned that QR code using the camera on your phone, it could automatically take you to a form. And you could choose how much that information you want to pre-populate ahead of time versus have the user put in. So maybe they're putting in some sort of unique identifier to identify them. The other thing I like about Glide is their ability to create relations based on different columns. So we actually have a really simplified session set up here because with that session, if I edit this, I can say I'm actually going based on the date itself. So I don't have to worry about what the event is called. I can just say, hey, if they submitted this form on today's date, it happens to match the event on today's date, we're going to automatically create that relationship between the two. And the last thing I want to mention here about Airtable is with their interfaces, we can have dashboards to make it easy to visualize this information. So for example, I could have a chart and be able to see how many absences we had over a certain time period. I could actually click into that and see, okay, who was absent for which of those classes and check in all my data here. And then we also have a pivot table, which ironically allows us to present this in more that spreadsheet style way. We could have the names going down here in our rows and our dates across as columns, or we could flip flop it. And this will give us the information we need to know about those different dates. I hope this has been helpful to see how we can set up attendance systems and what we can do to make this a better design for our users. If you have any questions about your own no-code setup, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.